Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome it's back. It's Donald to... Trump. Shut up, Greg. Anyway, hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Beer Analysis 101 this week, where we actually have a real beer this time because we were able to get something very convenient, all of us. Uh, anyway, tonight's beer we're going to do Steam Whistles Premium Pale Ale. The, uh, the other beer from Steam Whistle. Actually, they've got quite a few beers now, which we will talk about shortly. But first of all, I want to introduce the panel that we have with us tonight, which is also short. We have oh. Mr. Sexton, Ashley Sexton himself. Corona Ash. Corona Ash. Oh, God. How are you doing tonight, sir, Ashley? I'm, um, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Just no uh, another day of housebound with kids and, yeah. Did you get your, did you get your uh, money or whatever today? I did get some money today. Nice. I did. Yeah. I was a little surprised by that, but yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, there you go. I heard they screwed some stuff up of, of that, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Probably so. Right. Anyway, and speaking of uh, getting money, the guy got no money, but because he has it all already because he lives in the Tobacco condo. We got Greg. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, Nick, would you like to have a peek under oh, my okay. freshness seal? Yeah. It looks like it was already loose. I don't know if I'd trust that. Actually, it's true. It fell off. I put it back on. So this <laughs> oh, my God. It's got the corona. It's going to die, man. It's going to die. die. That's... Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, no, I, otherwise, I'm doing fine, Nick, other than the dog seems to want to disturb me all the time. And uh, also, I want to point out that it actually got paid for services, not from the government. So. <laughs> Very distinctive. He, he used uh, some of those moistly services there. Well, you know what? Yeah. He's realized that he, there is some money in sex work. And you know what? It's a gym at work, so why not? Oh, God. Anyway, moving right along. And, of course, uh, I forgot. To, like, I know you're still working, Greg. Is Agnes off, too? or No, she's been off for, like, four weeks. Not off. Well, not I'm off. Working, working from oh, home. She, uh, working. We're, oh, working from home. So, all right. That's different than, you know... Losing your job, shit. Yeah, no, anyway, no, we'll we'll talk about. Jobs. I'm just putting myself in danger every day. Just putting that out there at the beginning of this thing, just because like we'll look back at this in four years and remember what the plague was like. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is mark my words. This is before we found out that Corona turns everyone to zombies four weeks later. <laughs> All righty, so uh, let's move her back to me, and I'm going to read the history for this beer, which is. Basically, the history I wrote for Steam Whistle Pilsner with uh, stuff for the pale ale added. All right, I, I will just say my, my seal is on very, very securely. I am drinking this with the utmost confidence. Thank you, Steam Whistle. You were planning for this a year in advance. Holy Thank crap! God, God. Really Thank chopping God. up. Anyway, yeah, mine's on there tightly too. So I don't know what Greg's problem. I just I'm thinking somebody with Corona probably went through the LCBO and licked all the cans and then put the seals back on. And that's what how Greg's going to meet his end. Anyway, let's let's go to the history and stop making cruel jokes. We're probably going to regret in two months. Uh, so um, while Greg's crating his dog, I'm going to mute him. Sorry, Greg. Hi. Hi. Okay, I won't mute you if you're going to be quiet. I'll try. I trust you to be responsible enough to mute yourself. All right. So, Steam Whistle was founded in Toronto, Ontario, by three former employees of the Upper Canada Brewing Company following the buyout of Sleeman Breweries in 1998. Greg Taylor, Cam Heaps, and Greg Cromwell came up with the idea of starting. Greg came up with the idea of starting their own brewery on a post-employment camping trip, and originally planned to make name the brewery Three Fired Guys Brewing Company. They decided instead to name the brewery Steam Whistle to evoke an image of steam rushing from a factory whistle, signaling the end of the working day. However, a tongue-in-cheek reference to their um, their termination can still be found etched on Steam Whistle's green glass bottles as 3FG. I wonder if that's actually on the... Uh, I know it's on the Pilsner cans. Yeah, it is. It's actually on the Steam Whistle pale oil cans right there, at 3FG by the barcode. Anyway. So, the brewery opened and is still located in bays 1 through 14 of the historic John Street Roundhouse, a former CP Rail locomotive, locomotive repair facility located at the base of the CN Tower and next to the Sky Dome. Until recently, Star Steam Whistle only made one beer, the Steam Whistle Pilsner, with the idea that instead of focusing up on a lineup of different beers, to do one beer exceptionally well. That changed. The only other beer that they have is Steam Whistle Plus, <laughs> 
which is an unfiltered beer version of the steam whistle available at draft only at the brewery. And of course they got more than that now uh, to improve their beer in 2006 steam whistle bought brought in master brewery master brewer, Merrick Macunda, formerly of Pilsner Quell in the Czech Republic to help the brewery live up to its exacting standards of a true Pilsner and bring steam whistle up to the level of competitive level competitive on the world stage. Since this improvement, Steam Whistle has gone on to win silver at the 2016 Ontario Brewing Awards and gold at the 2012 Canadian Brewing Awards in the Pilsner category. In recent years, Steam Whistle has diversified slightly from the one beer done well ethos, opening a subsidiary brewery, Von Buell, in May of 2018, making their Vienna lager. They uh, also acquired the Canadian brewing distribution rights for New Belgium's Fat Tire. Uh, for the Canadian market in February of 2019. And their new pale ale, which we have here. And uh, it, just last week, they announced the addition of a new 4% ABV session lager, which is kind of laughable, isn't it? Just, just a light beer. Uh, so Steam Whistle Pale Ale, the beer we have with us tonight, is a 5% ABV, 40 IBU, hoppy pale ale. Released in May of 2019, their pale ale is brewed to the same Reinheitsgebot standards as the Pilsner, just with uh, ale yeast and Challenger hops. So still just water, barley, yeast, and and, and, uh, and hops. And uh, But this time they changed the yeast and changed the hops. Yeah. All right. So uh, without further ado, we actually have uh, one comment here. And uh, since the there is two comments here, you want to read your own comments or sexy? Sure. Hopefully, I'm coming. Th- what, was I re- really choppy a few minutes ago? Yeah, you were really chopping up. At least I, from from my end. I have all three of my kids are above me, and they're all streaming. Ah. So, anyways, uh, Eric Gilbert's in the chat. He says, "Cheers, fools." Beauty can hymen. So yeah. uh, <laughs> there we go. And uh asked him how he's doing, and he's he says he's doing well. So hopefully he's staying well and healthy and same with his family. And same to those of you out there watching. Hopefully you're not coughing into your beer, because that'd be unfortunate. This is true. Hope you're uh, staying healthy there, uh Tom Green. <laughs> All right, so uh let's get down to uh history with this beer. Um Ashley, what's your history with this thing? I've had this once. Uh, it was probably shortly after it uh, came out. So I'm, I'm sorry, with the history, did you say how long ago this came out? I was sort of. Here, top it up again. Oh. I was just asking how long ago this beer came out. Uh, 2019. I think it was May of 2019. Okay. So I've, I've had it. I, was, I thought six months ago, maybe it's been a longer than that. Yeah, it's been longer, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I had this shortly after it came out, and then not again until now. That's my history. But I mean, Steam Whistle Pilsner, I grab that one all the time. Uh, I, I find that one to be a good, good easy go to. But yeah. All right. All right. Let's move over to the other guy. He's you know he lives near the brewery, so chances are he has some history with this. What's your history? I don't live that close to the brewery. It's 15 minutes away, Nick. Still. Anyways, um, yeah, no, I, I've had it once before as well. I got it when it first came out. I don't know, maybe I bought two cans. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, had it once before. It's steam whistle product. It's, it is what it is. I'll take yeah. that in my review. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I suppose it's really not much more you can say about it than that it wouldn't be spoilers. Um, of course, I have no history of it. I bought two cans of this last week when I was out doing stuff at the office. So, uh, where I was forced to go outside and I stopped. Well, your office sells beer? No, my office doesn't sell beer, but it's located here. And it's located near an envy liquor. Yes, I know I'm rubbing my face. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is the importance of these purity seals. And we, we kind of touched on that earlier. But in this modern COVID-19 world, it's important that we keep our beers freshly sealed so that we uh, don't contract anything from, like, disgruntled employees licking cans and shit. And I'd be concerned about that label, that thing falling off so easily off of your can there, Greg. Well, next, see, the thing is now this is keeping me safe. I am now uh, covid proof. <laughs> well, you did tin foil hat. Tin foil hat. Put it right here. Good. Yeah. Now we're safe. See, so, someone at Steam Muscle right now is saying, "See, I told you 
this was a good idea. Yeah, we were all making fun of it last year because uh, like it was like the stupid overpackaging and the dumbest thing ever. And now we're all like, you know what? That makes sense now. It's, it's still <laughs> a stupid idea because no one should drink any of these beers out of the can. So let's mm. be honest. Should well, be going no, into well, a, a nice clean glass. That yeah, is the, the, guy, the guy who got fired for uh, for buying like two hundred thousand bucks worth of foil is he's now laughing in his in his easy chair. I mean, he still doesn't have a job, but yeah. Hmm. Interesting. There we go. Also, I guess we can also oh, say uh, happy Passover to our Jewish friends out there. Oh God! I, I, I'm just trying to cover up my bad. Yeah. There you go. We got the yarmulkes here. Here you go. Here's the screenshot, Jamie. But <laughs> you just need sideburns, babe. No, I do not need sideburns. I gotta make my head bigger. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, let go. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm tainted. All right, so let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, whole madness here and get back to what we were talking about we actually have four viewers out there if you want to say hi uh leave a comment we'll read it and uh uh let us know what you're drinking too drink along with us or eat along with us like when agnes is uh heating up the microwave you gonna wear that like an eye patch there uh she is, wow she's making a high quality frozen pizza nice that sounds good actually Actually, you know what? They are quite good. Shocking. All I had was vegetables for supper. It's, they're like Casa de Mama pizzas. And they're quite good. Actually, those are, are good. I've had those. And every pizza is personal. If you think, try hard. Believe in yourself. All right. So, hey, I'm a um, family of four. <laughs> according to the craft dinner box, I'm a, ha a family of four. All righty, so moving right along, anybody want to give um, thoughts on this thing here? I'm not, you don't really, there's not really much to say about this. You guys are so lucky you were muted. That was loud. Fire alarm went off. Wow. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump right into it. Um, Arr, you'll be jumping into it. Arr, me. How do you think the pale ale is there, Sexton? Arr. So I'm actually a big fan of pale ales. And uh, if, if I had to like choose like a desert island style of beer, it'd either be a pale ale or a pilsner. It's just so I, I, I do have a, a great appreciation for this style. And usually, what I'm looking for is just you know uh, a, a light multi body, you know, probably around that five five point five percent, with a nice you know citrus aroma, or you know, you could even be like Southern Hemisphere like hop aromas, like the, the tropical stuff. A little bit of bitterness and a nice little hit of flavor at the end. Um, this one has a very, I mean, or the looks of it, you know, it, it looks apart. It's, you know, uh, maybe a little bit darker than than straw, maybe a little bit closer to yellow. It's pretty clear. It's got a little bit of haze to it, nothing crazy. Uh, the aroma come, comes across a, a little metallic-y for me. Like, like, not like, uh, like lager aroma where you get like some like more minerality or like self, like sulfur to it, but just like it smells like metal and a little bit of citrus to me, and maybe a little bit of like, like breadiness to it. Um, the, the taste, it's, it's like slightly sweet malt. Um, a little bit of like candied orange like flavor to it very low on the bitterness and um yeah it's just just sort of falls flat you know mm -hmm. to me th this this drinks more like uh i don't know like a, a north american like blonde ale type of thing uh, on the bitterness side of things uh it doesn't really have a big punch of flavor to it it's it's very generic um it's um it's 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 a run of the mill beer to be completely honest. Uh, to call it a pale ale is a little bit of an insult, I think. Um, just because it doesn't really have much, like, it doesn't really have much hop character. It doesn't really have a nice aroma. It doesn't really do anything. Um, it just sort of looks the part, but everything else falls flat after that. Um, I, I I I find it. You know, funny that they use Challenger hops too. It's just sort of uh, 
an old school boring hop. I don't even know where Challenger hops are derived from. Is it is it a UK hop? I can't even remember. I actually I think Challenger hops are a UK hop. So they're you know. Let me find it. I had it open. When I was looking up what because they said challenge on their website. Yeah, and I'm like, no, that's gonna be Challenger. That's why I asked you. So yeah, I mean it's it's okay, but it's just really not a well done pale ale in my books. Like for my palate, what I'm looking for in a pale ale. So, I mean for for style, I'm just gonna give it a straight six. And for personal enjoyment, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm not really enthused about it. I could probably drink if like two of these. So I'll give it a six and a half for personal enjoyment. So there we go. Six for style and six and a half for personal. Ouch. Time. Damn. All right. Yeah. And well, I'll get into whether we do, I agree or not in a bit. All right. So let's move over to Greg. Hello, Nick. What's your, what's your thoughts on my, my hat steam safe. whistle pale ale? Remember to wear your so, freshness seal. I'm actually rather proud of myself because I was looking at my untapped check in and my untapped check in from July the 7th. So. I suspect it came out July early because I usually pick this shit up right around. So maybe it was released like some places in May, but yeah, July is when I first did it. Um, mm -hmm. I said, not much of a pale ale, more of a slightly hoppy red ale. And then Ashley says this, and if Ashley says it, I'm like, hey, I know I'm kind of right. Um, at least about the non not pale ale part. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. It doesn't really taste to me like a pale ale. Um, Kind of tastes to me more like, uh, well, as I said, it's almost like a red ale. It doesn't look like one, but it almost to me has that red ale taste to it. It's kind of got the, I, I interpret it as a grapiness kind of uh, taste uh, with just a little bit of a hop bite. Now that this one's warmed up a little bit, it's actually got a little peppery to it. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's a particularly good pale ale. I think at most it could be some sort of a British hybrid where something British mixed with a little citrus, but... Um, I don't know, there's not much else to say about it. I, I do think I like it more than Ashley because I think it Steam Whistle is going for their audience and their audience, yeah, they make a good Pilsner, but it's still a Pilsner and, you know, Pilsners are generally drank by people that just want a beer that they can knock back with a pizza or watching the game and they can just kind of not worry about it. So I think in that sense, they've sort of nailed it for what their customer base is. Uh, and I suspect their lager will probably be the same thing, where it'll be tasty enough, but you'll forget about it two seconds after drinking it. Um, so I'll match Ashley on the style. I'll say it's a six, but I'm going to go quite a bit higher on personal enjoyment because I actually quite like this. Um, uh, I'm going to go seven and a half on it. I, I enjoy it. I actually buy more of them. Uh, I think what might hold me back is I think the price of them is like three twenty-five a can or something when... Considering some of the other beers I can get for a lot less than that, that might hold me back. Uh, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I, uh, I think it's a solid beer. It's not quite up there to get an eight or higher, but it's it's. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Cool story, bro. Yeah. Good, good right. story. Good story. Yeah. All right. So uh, here for me, and then we'll go to the comments here. So my thoughts on this is kind of got this weird soapy fruit kind of aroma uh i'm getting like burnt orange or something out of the out of the aroma as well and i think i think ashley was talking about or orange like a uh, candied orange or something yeah. or orange candies remember you got to call it that around uh when he's not here i suppose anyway in the body i get this uh, caramel malt uh like biscuit uh orange candies it's all very light and got this weird kind of like soapiness to the whole shebang uh, it does have a nice body on it. It's got a crisp, earthy fin finish with a lingering copper coin and resin uh, in the background of the back of the palate. But overall, it's just, it's meh. It's like wet. It could be a beer that I'd try once at a bar and then I'd never have it again. Um, overall, I'm going to give, like, for pale ale. I mean, I like pale ales, uh, especially, like, hoppy pale ales. But at the same time, this is just uh, unremarkable. And it, but, I don't know. I compared to what my initial opinions on the steam whistle pilsner was, because that's a solid pilsner even today. This is just, what is this? Uh, so six and a half for the style and seven overall. That's my thoughts on that. There we go. I mean, it's not bad. It's just 
kind of it's a just, misstep. Yeah, it's just meh. Yeah, I gave that much of the orange candy in the in the uh, in the flavor. I would say that this wasn't fresh. Like, how old is this can? February. Uh, I would say that I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to drink this old. Mine's uh, Feb nineteen. Yeah, that's what mine's mine kind of says. I'm thinking it's like February nineteenth. <laughs> mine's yeah. February the fourth. I'm the old one. Yeah, look, Feb nineteen two hundred. Oh, mine says twenty ten. Mine's from twenty nineteen. Jesus, sorry, twenty oh nine. Yeah, yeah I think that's nine nine forty five in the morning on February yeah. the nineteenth. Yeah, actually. they did. Yep. This is before month, the virus. Month, month, day, year, and then the the four digit time. There we go. Yeah, and uh, so go, going to comments. Uh, so Eric Gilbert's doing well. Jimmy Jazz is uh, in the chat. He's uh, he was drinking his new Collective Arts Fest Pineapple Vanilla IPA. That sounds good. So that's the new Liquid Fart Fest, um, which I'm assuming that that festival has been canceled. Um, Eric Gilbert mentions that the alcohol kills the virus on contact, so steam whistle hymen is still a dumb idea. Huh. There we go. Answering my question, Eric says, Challenger hops are UK and are used in barley wines and heavies mostly. I figured as much. Um, I can see how that could be used in a barley wine or something a little bit more malt forward to what Nick was saying there with the, the orange note. I think orange, those orangey notes sort of lend themselves very well to malty beers. It's just sort of a, a nice, it, it, the flavors don't juxtapose so much. They sort of go together. Um, I was asking Jimmy how it is, how his fart fest is drinking. Uh, asked Eric what he's drinking, and he's drinking Albert, uh, Albert, Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye. I've been staying away from the LCD more because of the long weekend lines. And yeah, you know what? I'll be honest. Um, I've been able. I was able to go out today, and I, I, I'm trying to limit all of my my trips out. I just, I just had a few things I had to do today. So I found myself out and about, and I stopped off at the LCBO so I didn't have to go closer to the weekend because they're going to be closed on Friday, and they're going to be closed on Sunday. So I figured I'll just go out now, uh, get Amy some like wine and spirits for the weekend. And uh, you know what? The, the wait line wasn't that bad where I'm at. Uh, and it's weird because there, there's only two LCBOs in Welland, and they're both very small. So you think that they'd always be rammed because of the population. But, uh, yeah, it was like five people ahead of me. It wasn't that bad. So... But that's that's it for the chat. That is it. That's it. Oh no. That right, is so it. I'm going to bring it back here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I only went to your LCBO once, and it was dead. The time yeah. I was there. Yeah. Not yeah, that I assume that means anything, but I think a lot of the people in this area they tend to go over the bridge to the states and get alcohol. Not that they can do that now, but uh, yeah, yeah. Chris Lezak has had his supply taken away. From yeah, him. man. I know, poor guy. Think That's about why he's not doing think about Chris. What's that? Did anybody ever think about Chris? I mean, I occasionally think about him when I'm in the shower and touching myself. <laughs> Coronavirus did not. You're thinking about him playing the guitar on the weekends and how wow. much that makes you wet. I like moistly. to play my own strings, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, God. Jimmy Jazz, uh, Jesus Christ. Jimmy Jazz says uh, the Liquid Fart Fest is okay in his opinion, certainly not their best. Uh, yeah, and he confirms Liquid Art Fest postponed until mid-August, last I heard not canceled yet. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah, because that's what they do with the St. John Beer Fest was supposed to be next week, and I think, oh, here. Yeah. And they postponed it all the way to June, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, who knows? I mean, maybe they'll have it. I'd love to see them have it. It'd be nice to actually get out and drink some fucking beers after all this shit's over, but right. the important part is this shit has to be over first. And uh, Eric uh, confirms what everyone else is thinking, which is that Welland is more of a meth town. And uh, Chris is in the chat. I think mm -hmm. about myself yeah, all the time, he says. Cheers, Chris. When I think about Greg, I touch my... No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been like doing Chris the math? Performing a solo. Say what? Said it sounds like Chris is performing a solo. Oh, hand solo. There we go, Nick. You, you're, you're helping to illustrate Chris masturbating. Yep. Maybe Chris can uh, pipe in with when he's going to open up that Liquid Fart Fest from 2009. 
18? It's got it's got to be reviewed for sure. It's got to be reviewed. You have to throw that on a video, Chris. I'm sorry, you do. You owe that to everyone. And not group. a move quickie. It should be a full, no. in my opinion, <laughs> like a own. documentary. <laughs> this has got to be a, a moo documentary. This is <laughs> a, a moo documentary. <laughs> yes, a moo documentary. <laughs> it feels like a mockumentary, but it's moo. <laughs> I read the chat. He's like, what be going down? Uh, Chris is at work. There we go. Well, you should be working. Well, uh, Richard, in the chat. And then Chris says he's never going to open it. No, you will. You have to. You have to. Uh, you, you can't. You can't not open that beer. I've got to see it. I have to see what's in there. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to throw it out there. Maybe you should fly Dick Nick down and uh, the two you can open it while sitting in your hot tub. Oh, my God. That'd be amazing. That'd be so good. It'd be like a brown. It 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 probably pour out like turkey gravy. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like glub, glub, oh, glub, you know, glub. the lactose would be so gone <laughs> off that <laughs> that you'd shit your pants the next day. It's not even like it's being stored properly, like in a fridge. He's probably <laughs> putting it on the windowsill, like letting it it's, get it's, like all the pasteurized. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Jazz says, I don't think they did an Art Fest beer last year. And you know what? I think you're 100% right. Um, and I remember liking the original version from two years ago a little bit better. So perhaps if Red Beer is in the chat, he can tell Jimmy Jazz how much he loved Liquid Art Fest. Oh, he loved how many did he? How many did he buy? <laughs> and no, Chris, like it's probably thousand. not fine. There's no all right, way all right. on God's green earth that that beer is fine. I'm sorry. Well, I'm okay, so up. here's the scores. Uh, there we go. Yeah. It's meh. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's about, that's about right. <laughs> it's exactly, it's exactly what next week's beer is gonna be like. Now, now listen, I don't, I don't know how much advertising for Steamo so you guys get in your areas, but their their big logo and the, sorry, their big slogan they don't have it anymore is we do one thing really really well, and this was their advertising for years and years. Now it's like now they we got do a lot of things okay. <laughs> we do a lot of things a okay. Can't call them perfect. It was a perfect conversation. It was still perfect. It was great. Even their flagship Pilsner, like I really felt, feel it's dropped off in quality over the last year or two. Like it's uh, ever since really they started brewing their stuff in Etobicoke, just down the street from me. I think there's something wrong with our water because it just doesn't yeah. taste right. So uh, Chris is saying, it, <laughs> despite what I think, that it's on a windowsill. He says it's under my coffee table. And Eric Gilbert says the Liquid Fart Fest will release the next virus. <laughs> I, I I I totally believe that. I think that's what's oh, going to happen. And as soon as Chris ha it, 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 as soon as Chris opens, it, it's going to be like coronavirus plus Ebola. Uh, Red Beard uh, confirmed Just, that that beer was amazing, and Jimmy Jazz is all too well aware of Red Beard's obsession with that beer. <laughs> I thought it was an excellent cooler. Uh, it was like alcoholic five alive. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. It's not okay, Chris. It's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's living. All right. <laughs> Anyways. So. Oh, oh, look, we got it. We got the question asked. What's there next we week's go. craft logger? We, kind of are, we already had it flashed on screen earlier. But uh, these brave souls that we have us with us in the chat and hopefully a couple others will be joining us next nope. week for Fat the other tire. steam whistle beer. New it's Belgium's not, Fat Tire. It's not a lager, Eric. It's not a lager. It's not a lager. Lager. Brewed by Steam Whistle in the Toby Co. That must be the uh, like brewed in like capacity over at the uh, Bugle yes. plant. Yes, that's exactly. Which is, what it is like close to Greg. So What's yeah, we're, you want to do what to Greg? I got yeah, a fat we're talking. We're giving you a fat tire. I love it when you give me a fat you know, tire. Fat, now. fat, fat rubber. Fortune, this does not have a freshness seal, so we. Oh will, yeah, well. We're, we're gonna save this for next week. Yeah, by then the virus will be dead on uh, on the top. There we go. Again. Now we're just don't drink it until then. Now we're well taken. Now care you, of. you did you put a fat uh, a freshness seal on top of your? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's saved for next week, and we're all good. Just you wait. Everything is going to have a freshness seal from now on. Including you, Nick. Holy crap, we actually have five viewers right now. Like, I don't know. Thank everybody for watching. This is some of the best turnout we've had for a while. And it just goes to show that at this time of night, nobody really has anything to do anymore. <laughs> no, there's no sports on. Yeah, there's no sports. It's just watch Greg. I it's like watch all of us with 
with tinfoil yamakas on. I wouldn't be watching sports anyway. This is a great time to catch up on all those video games you haven't had time to play. That's what I'm doing. And I still don't have yeah. time to play them. Like, let's yeah, right. be honest. Yeah, I'm still behind, and I'm, 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 I was watching Picard and watch, was watching Better Call Saul, but I fell behind. I just am busy with work and doing this shit. You catch then... up on both. Picard is, yeah, Picard the season finale I quite like. I heard it was good, and I've been trying to avoid spoilers that people have been posting online. Better Call Saul is just like, I love Breaking Bad and, and Better Call Saul. It's one of my favorite Better Call Saul is good. I felt kind of like, I think we're on episode eight. I think six and seven were a little slow for the show, and then eight yeah. was really good. I think I left off in four or five for the season. Yeah, but the thing is, even though even the slower shows are still better than most shows on TV. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just right. solid. It's just solid programming. It's just an interesting right, story. Pirate Sexton? Arr. Yeah. <laughs> Arr. Yard steam whistle. Yard be steam whistle in your bunghole. She blows lightly. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go offline. So yeah, next week we're doing New Belgium because we it was a beer we could get in a moment's notice, and uh, we'll see where we're gonna go after that. So I want to thank everybody for watching this. Uh, Cheers, Jimmy. We Red have beer. Jimmy, Eric, Red Beard, Chris. Frozen Beta, Eric Liebert, yep. and um, we'll come back in a few minutes with the after chat. So we'll talk to you folks later, and right. Cheers.